Okay. Thank you for being here, and I, I really hope that you're learning a lot here. And if this is a lot that you've taken in so far in the previous three videos, there will be probably bing, bang, boom, three, four, four, the previous four videos, four cards in a row. Uh, for those four videos, I would start with number one and move forward from there. I hope this has opened your eyes and, uh, you know, stop this video if this is a lot for you to take in and just digest it, maybe for a couple hours or for a couple days and come back and then watch this video. Also, uh, a lot of these connections are tangential and I'm purposefully speaking in such a way that can be viewed as riddles and dark sayings. There's a reason why Yeshua spoke in riddles and dark sayings. It says in Proverbs that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and it's the honor of kings to seek out that matter. Um, some of these matters I have found and it's inappropriate for me to take the place of God in um, showing you all of the bounties that he's shown me. But what I am doing is I'm giving you hints and clues, uh, tangentially showing you these things. If that's frustrating, thank you for still being here. But um, uh, in order for you to understand these things, you've got to study yourself approved. You've got to sacrifice some of your time um, in, in your day. You've got to sacrifice some time with your family. You've got to sacrifice some time uh, from your job or from the things that you enjoy to sit down for an hour every day and have your meal, eat your manna. Uh, a lot of these things just aren't going to make sense to you if, um, if you haven't earned the right for them to make sense. I know that might be harsh sounding, but, um, but shoot darn it, it's the truth. And I'm not telling you to go, um, to go hurt people or to be, to be uh, mean. I'm, I'm telling you to sacrifice some of your time and spend it with the Lord. Seek the kingdom of God first and everything else will fall into place, even if it's tough for a time or for a season. You can do it. I've got faith in you. Yah certainly has faith in you, and he, he's beside you, above you, in front of you, and behind you. In any suffering that you might go through, he's got your back. Show him that you love him, and uh, you will be loved back even more than you already are loved. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the judge himself and kind of doing the same thing that we did with Moses and Aaron and the people, but with Yah. What is proper judgment, right? A lot of people think that judging is not good at all. We all pretty much know that that's not true. That's just something that... Um, people who are way, way off the path say to take a necessary tool out of the belt of the people who can move the world in the right direction. Don't judge me because I'm evil, is what they're saying. If you are on the right track, then you kind of want to be judged. You want a righteous person, and we're not talking about vengeance, we're talking about judgment. We want a righteous, loving person to look at our actions and say, here are the instructions on how to do what you're doing better. And then if you're, if you're not strong enough to do it better, then chastening comes in until you become strong enough to do what is right, standing on your own two feet. That's more or less proper judgment. So we've got mercy as well. God is judgment and mercy. He is a judge. If you don't want anyone judging you, what are you going to do on judgment day? That's how to get from, from this life to the next. You have to be judged. He's going to judge you based on your works. Right? You want your works to be in Him. You want it to be something that you can say, God, you told me to do this, and then I relied on your mercy. No, you want to say, Lord, you told me to do this, and then I did it because I respect and I fear you, and it was the last thing in the world that I wanted to do, and I was very afraid of doing it, but I fear you more than I fear the world. And so I did it, and you carried me through it. That's the picture of Elijah here. How does this all play into Ki Tisa? Moses went up the mountain. He got the rules and regulations by which Yah judges people. He came down the mountain, saw adultery, became angry, 
threw down the tablets. Everybody was in trouble. Yah says, I can't do this, I can't be with you. I'm out of here. The people mourned. That plague of mourning is important. That wasn't a small thing. For several days, if not weeks, the people did nothing but lay in their tents and mourn the loss of God. Something happened inside of them. They weren't asking God to change. They showed repentance. And at that point, God said, all right, let's try this again. Then Moses goes back up the mountain and he gets the law again. And when he comes down the mountain, his face is shining, so fresh, so clean, so bright. And everyone sees Moses with his shining face and they run up to him and give him a hug and tell him how good looking he is. No, that's not what happened. The people ran away in fear of Moses' bright shining face, which was reflecting God. Even though they had repented, they still had guilt inside of them that was separating them from God. But while Moses was gone, I'm sure that the golden calf situation tried to rear its ugly head again, and this time they were strong. Moses says, no, 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 don't run away. Come to me. I've got good news. I'm going to preach good news to the broken. I'm going to preach uh, good tidings to the poor. I'm going to heal the brokenhearted, right? That's what's happening there. So this picture of Moses coming down the mountain is just like Elijah coming out before God, right? Elijah is the people. God is God. And both of these, they look like Judgment Day. On Judgment Day, he's going to come in the clouds, and the, the very same thing that's going to cause the whole world to run away in fear and beg for the rocks and the mountains to cover them, to hide them from the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the earth, that very same thing that's causing them to run is going to cause us to go to him. They're running away, we're running to him. Why are they running away? It's because they're unwilling to change. They were unwilling to change. They have sown the seeds of unrighteousness and now they're gonna reap the harvest of unrighteousness, a wicked harvest. We have sown the seeds of righteousness. Righteousness is actually zedekah, which is justice, which is basically proper judgment. We have sown the seeds of judgment, of justice. And so we can go to him. Why? Because we've been with him the whole time. The only way for justice to happen properly, the only way for justice to happen properly is if God is with you. When we say righteous, we define it as God's covering us. That's the English definition of it. The Hebrew definition of uh, Zedekah is justice. And it's just understood that there's no way that you can live in a way where you are just and you are meeting out justice without having God covering you. Now, Elijah, we have the same circumstance. It's, a, it's like, it's a perfect picture. There's the prophets of Baal, there's the people building the golden calf. And then there's uh, Elijah slaughtering the people, and then there's Moses and Aaron slaughtering the, uh, the people, the prophets of Baal, right? Same circumstance. Now further, we've got Moses coming down the mountain and the people running away, but God calling them back. We've got Elijah up on the cliff. He hears an earthquake. No, that's not God. He hears a strong, tumultuous wind. Eh, he's being very pragmatic about this. He knows Yah's character. That's not God. He hears a still, small voice, and he comes out with his face covered. Elijah, what have you been doing? Is that not what Yah is going to say to us on Judgment Day? Is that not what Moses said to Aaron and the people? What have you been doing? Elijah's response is not just lip service. 
he truly was being very zealous for the Lord. God asks him again. This isn't a person, this is God asking him again. This is going to cause Elijah to search his spirit and check himself. Wait, hold on. Have I really been really zealous for the Lord? Where have I messed up? He's standing before God. There's no more excuses. I've been very zealous for the Lord, is his response again. He hears that, that judgment coming down on him. I'm about to judge you, Elijah. Elijah could have stayed there with God, and that's what he did, because he was standing on righteousness. Or he could have turned around and run away, hiding himself from God. And that's not what Elijah did, because Elijah had sown himself seeds of righteousness, and he was harvesting that crop. The harvesting of that crop is the ability to stand before the Lord boldly and courageously. That's a win for Elijah. Guess who else that's a win for? His husband. It's a win for Yah. He doesn't like being alone. He wants people to be with him. He's set up his throne room in such a way that he is surrounded by dozens upon dozens of people who have the right idea about things. So there we are. The proper look at mercy and judgment. Judgment and mercy. Believe it or not, there is judgment in mercy. And there is mercy in judgment. Do you see it? It is merciful for Yah to judge the people. The plague of mourning was meant to get them to break off their earrings, to get rid of their ornaments so that he would know what to do with them. He needed them to strip themselves of their Egyptian ornaments in order to start afresh from a new foundation. That was mercy that he was willing to judge them. And then also, judgment. Judgment has mercy in it too. Him judging you is him saying, I want you to be near me even though you messed up. So when we look at this pragmatically, objectively, allowing the facts that are in Scripture to be the things that lead our faith, and those two things together, the facts in Scripture and our faith, to be the thing that lead our feelings, when we let that uh, proper order of things um, walk the tightrope that is life properly, then we can be in the presence of God. Real God. I'm not talking about the angel that's masquerading as light. I'm not talking about you being tricked. I'm talking about the Father loving you and pouring out his goodness on you. So that's all I've got for Ki Tisa. That's the end of this series. I hope that you've enjoyed it, and I pray that the Father will um, give you time to study these things and study them in such a way to where you keep these things in mind and that you can glean the real truth out of the scriptures and that you use it properly. Don't take Yeshua's mercy for granted. I think what I actually mean is uh, don't take advantage of Yeshua's mercy. And this probably isn't going to sound right, and I know this is a harsh ending statement, but I'm ending it this way on purpose, and it's because I love you and Yah loves you. There's more than one kind of mercy out there. There's only one true mercy. And the world is structured such that no man is able to take advantage of Yah's mercy. Seek judgment. You have a husband who loves you. Your job is to serve him with all of your strength. Go forth and make disciples of men. In Yeshua.